We're talking angles yes. and something that you've seen so far, not only this season, but all of last season. What are we talking about? Yeah, so last season, I'm noticing a lot of players shooting and players scoring on sharp angle shots, short side, right? Mm -hmm. We used to call it the American League side. You don't want to let have NHL goalies letting goals in on that short side. But it seemed like players were picking the spot a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I thought to myself, this is really interesting because it's goalies and players trying to figure each other out and trying to expose each other in different ways. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of exactly what I'm talking about. All you fans at home, I know you've seen a lot of these goals, especially last year. Here's Anton Lundell as an example. Short side, over the, uh, over the shoulder and into the back of the net. You don't want to give up goals there, right? But you look at the position that the goaltender's in, it's called the reverse VH, RVH, right? So you get your skate on the inside of the post. The reason goalies do this, it allows you to push across faster, right? And if there is that lateral play to the front of the net, you got a better opportunity to get over there and make a save. Yep. But if you don't execute it properly, it leaves that little spot there. And players are so good today that they're hitting that spot. They're looking for it and they're hitting it. So I wonder to myself, have there actually been more goals from this area of the ice? So here's what I did. I isolated two areas of the ice and determined how many goals were scored in these spots. You get a little more scientific if you wanted, but I got a name here today. I wanted yet? to get this. Do you done. have a name for that? Because we have the high danger. We have uh, all these terms. Called the Sharpie zone, right? The oh. sharp angle zone. Okay, call I the like Sharpie that. Zone. Yeah, the Sharpie. Yeah. Kell's corner. Yeah, Ooh. there you go. So, what, were there more goals? Are these bad angle goals last season? Absolutely, there was. You look at a couple seasons ago. There was 185 of these goals total in the league. And you look at last season, that number jumped to 338. That's an 83% wow. increase, all right? That's a big, big spike. And like I said, this is matching the eye test of what I thought I was seeing. Mm -hmm. Players shooting for it more, players scoring on it more. Here's Tory Krug, preseason this year. These guys are practicing this shot. Wow. That is a crazy angle. And Tory Krug is able to put the puck right where he wants it uh, into a really, really tight space. He's standing on the goal line. He's able to put it there on a one-timer, <laughs> let alone a standard shot. Yeah. Guys are too good now, right? So here's an example from this season. That's a threat in front of the net. That's why the goalie's in that RVH with his uh, skate on the inside post. JT Comfort can hit that spot now. It's not just the superstars. It's not just star players. It's whatever. JT Comfort's a very good player. He can hit that spot, and that's exactly what he does. There was a threat there. So I understand why the goalie was in it. Here's what I don't understand. Matty Beneers in the preseason, all right? He's got an opportunity here. There's no threat in front of the net whatsoever, but here you've got the goaltender making himself six plus feet to lower than six feet and giving him an opportunity to score. So that was my main beef with this, I guess, yeah. is that I think it's been overcoached a little bit. I think that a lot of guys, when the puck gets to a certain spot, a lot of goalies will automatically go into that move because, hey, the puck's here, this is what I do. There's nobody in front of the net. There's no threat there. You don't have to go into that position. And that's where I think there could be a little more read and react, a little more athleticism. And I'll show you an example. So here's this season, uh, early in the year, Jake Allen, right? Watch his head. Right there, he's reading the middle of the ice. Is there any threat? No, there's no threat. What am I going to do? I'll stand here and let the puck hit me. Old school. Brilliant, Stay right? on your feet. Exactly. So that's one option. Another thing, I've talked to some goalie coaches about this recently when I was putting this together. You watch Craig Anderson. He's old school. He's got his pad on the outside of the post. Uh, a lot of goalie coaches now, and talking to a couple of them recently, and talking to a former goalie as well, are having their guys overlap the post with their, with their uh, skate. And Kevin Weeks is going to show us this in a second. Yep. But when you overlap and you don't have your skate on the inside of the post, it allows you to be a little more square to the shooter. The reason the goalie coaches are going now a little bit more away from the RVH in some of these spots is because the shooters have started to score in a lot of these spots. Interesting. And that's the yin and the yang of it, right? And the best part about it, I was talking to a goalie coach this morning with a Western Conference team. They debate this amongst themselves. Huh. There, it, what they do in Vancouver, it's different from what they do in Pittsburgh. There is no one-size-fits-all for it. So the shooters started scoring on it. The goalies are now starting to adapt a little bit with how they're defending it. And now here's the best part. We've got a professional goaltender on our show. He's the head of the goalie union. The head of the goalie union, Mr. Kevin Weeks. But I'll tell you this. Hold on. All of last season, what were you saying? You said short side high is the new five, is the new five fall. Yeah, he no. was five preaching fall. that all five last fall. season, yeah. and now you have the numbers to back it up. Yeah. I'd love to hear your opinion on that take. Great job. Great job, gents. Great job, Thank Kells. You. That substantiates everything. You're exactly right. And, and one of the challenges... For goalies at any level, for a lot of you young girls and boys, or those of you that play adult rec league, you're over in Chelsea Piers, wherever you may be, you got to play one shooter at a time. You can't play multiple. So now, yes, your point is very valid. makes a lot of sense. You want to be able to read and scan. So if you're set up, let's just say hypothetically, 
for the purpose of the, t the TV camera angles. If you're on this post and there's a shooter on this side coming down your glove side, right? Kels, you're ready you're or lefty? Let me hold on. What are you? Yes. Lefty. Okay. I'll be back. Go Let's grab start. one. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So if, if you're setting up on this side and you're not, you know, opposite handed like Cal Peterson, big win last night, or like Logan Thompson was great last night, even though they lost up in Calgary, but your traditional glove hand left catching goalie. And the shooter's on this side of the ice, right? So, Kels, if you'll come over here for one sec, even though... See, we're putting you to be, work. This will go. be your off wing, nonetheless, right? That's where I'm at my best. But, exactly. But if you're here, and you're this close to the net, I can understand goalies saying, okay, listen, you're this close to me in terms of proximity. Maybe I'm a little bit uh, more conservative. I'm not challenging as much. I'm not coming out as far. I'm going to retreat a little bit more. And with your sick blade being here, odds are you're probably, if the D isn't cutting this off, Jamo, so if you're here... Yep. You can come here for a sec, please, Jamo. Let me Jamo. grab a stick so it looks so, authentic. There you go. <laughs> Great. So if the D, so yep. say you're a D and you're here. Yep. Well, odds are you're shooting mm -hmm. or you're going to curl and drag or you're taking this around. So if you're going to shoot, clearly at this point, it's a lot easier for me, really, to go down in some sort of a butterfly if we can get these pads to work. <laughs> they aren't my brand. But Boy, nonetheless. The Velcro's okay, coming off. So, so here, you're in a butterfly, right? So maybe you're in a butterfly here. Maybe you're even anchoring and you're in a little bit of a VH. Vertical, horizontal, you're in a VH so you can push off. Maybe you're comfortable enough to be in an RVH because now if you pull this a little bit, Kells, now you're in the RVH, right? This pad is now horizontal, this one's vertical, and you're here. But at least you're sealing. You have to lean into this short side. You have to. I don't care how tall you are. You have to lean in that short side because that's what your eye's seeing. Yeah. Now, let's say you're not there. Yeah. So if you back up, Kells, if you back up again, so now... If it's just you and I, mano a mano, you have to honor this short side. You have to. Goalies have to. But what we're seeing, and I want you to watch this right pad. More often than not, it's here. And now I'm not square with the puck, and I'm not square with the middle of the net. So your eyes are why, seeing why the would short it be side. There? Why would that foot be there? To, to Kels's point, now a lot of goalies are saying, well, now you're an you offense. Get across. Right? So now you come uh, down here. Okay. So now you're a pass option. Yep. So now a lot of guys are saying, instead of me being here and locked, right, now a lot of guys are saying, okay, let me put this pad back. I'm now in a position where I can push over laterally if you make this pass, and it gives me a chance to get over. But here's the thing. The net's yeah. still... <laughs> you're having I to put sell that right in yeah, the table. No, that's right great. The net's still 4 by 6 It hasn't changed. Yeah. The rink dimensions are still 200 by 85. Yep. So for a lot of you goalies, play one shot at a time, play one shooter at a time, honor the dead angle or the sharp angle, the sharpie angle shots or position where the puck is, Honor those angles. Don't cheat on those angles because here's what's happening now. A lot of shooters like Tory Krug and like a lot of these other guys, they're students of the game. Yeah. They're students of the game. So we're seeing it in the women's game. We're seeing it at the National Hockey League level, whether it's Hillary Knight, where it's Mary Philippe Poulin, whether it's Sidney Crosby, Nate McKinnon, they're studying what the goalies are doing, but also what the goalies aren't doing. It's a game of cat and mouse. And I've seen the trend that even if they don't have the angle, they're trying to bank it sometimes off your mask or something totally. like that in if they don't have that sharp side angle. Correct. So play one shooter at a time because if and when you don't, you don't have to worry about the other one nope. when they turn the red yeah. light on. <laughs> this is it. And nobody yeah. likes getting beat no. short side, especially in some isolated situations. Yeah. I'm a 6'1 guy without skates. I'm 6'1. Yep. We have a lot of big goalies there that are 6'6. Six, six. But it's one thing to be big, to your point. But it's another thing to play big. Right. UC Soros plays big. He's not big. There are Correct. guys in the league that are big that play small sometimes. Correct. And Jamie McLennan is one of the guys I talked to about this. Mm -hmm. And he said that Mika Kiprasov to him was the best he'd ever seen at reading the rush. Yeah. Right. As soon as a guy comes in over the zone, he has already assessed every possible threat. And he can then, you know, do what he has to do best. I guess my point in all this and going back and watching a lot of this video, mm -hmm. it just seems like it's a little formulaic. Default. And, but I think, we're, I think we're starting to get away from it. That's what I'll be watching for this year. Yeah. Have the goalie coaches taught the goalies or kind of got them a little bit away from that, a little more read and react. Um, maybe we'll see less of those Sharpie goals. I've got to be able to trust myself as a goalie at elite levels that I have the ability to get over and push on yeah. a lateral pass. Instincts, right? Right? I'm not cheating enough, so I'm cheating, so I'm really retreating, and now I'm really making myself small. Yeah. If you're over here, JMO, as a puck carrier, you're a righty over there, but let's just say you're over there, right? Yep. So if you're there and I'm here, yep. you're seeing this all day long. Yeah. Now I'm really making myself, what's the sense of, hey, we're looking for tall goalies, we're looking for tall goalies. <laughs> you're six, seven, and you're on your knees looking for quarters yeah. at the wrong time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, if I'm that six, seven guy, I'm six, five, I'm six, four, whatever, six, three, I'm presenting that to you. You're there as a right-hand shot. Mm -hmm. If I'm here now and it's a dead angle shot, yep. I feel so much better. I feel 
I'm on top of it, I'm on my toes, I present that target, there's no shot option there, or no pass option, excuse me, mm -hmm. I can line up with you and make a save.